Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to compute the following limits without using El Hopital's rule. Let's get started. Let's look at this uh, first limit here. As x approaches 0, so this approaches 0, and since uh, cotangent x is equal to cosine x over sine x, then as x approaches 0 from the right, then this will approach uh, 0 from the right, this will approach 1, so 1 over 0 from the right, that will approach infinity. That is when x approaches 0 from the right. So cotangent x will approach positive infinity. And when x approaches 0 from the left, then this one here, again, this is equal to cosine x over sine x. And our numerator goes to 1. The denominator will go to 0, but from the left of 0. So therefore, the limit of cotangent x is 1 over 0 from the left, which is equal to negative infinity. So therefore, this cotangent x here will approach either positive infinity when you approach 0 from the right or negative infinity when we approach 0 from the left. Therefore, this product here has an indeterminate form 0 times infinity. So the limit here may or may not exist. So we need to do extra effort in order to determine the limit. When we compute the limits uh, involving trigonometric functions and the limit is an indeterminate form, it is very helpful to use uh, known results and identities to evaluate the limit. So in this video, we assume that uh, we know that the limit of theta over theta as a theta approaches zero is equal to one. So we're going to use this fact here to evaluate this limit. So we can write x cotangent x as x cosine x over sine x. And because we want to use this uh, fact here, then we're going to write our function as uh, cosine x over sine x over x. And here we can already evaluate the limit because cosine x will approach cosine 0, which is equal to 1. And sine x over x will approach 1 from this result. Therefore, the limit of this one using quotient rule is equal to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Let's move to the second problem. For this second limit, can we do direct substitution? The answer is no. Why? Because tangent of 0 is equal to 0 and sine of 0 is also equal to 0. So again, the limit has the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So here, let's uh, do some manipulation in order to determine the limit. So this expression here can be written as 1 over sine of 4x times this uh, tangent of 5x here can be written as sine of 5x times 1 over cosine 5x. And if we look at the limit of each factor, so this is in the form 1 over sine of 0, which is equal to 0. So this will approach 0. This will approach sine of 0, which is 0. This one here, it will approach 1 over cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So there is no problem with this factor here. So now we want to find a way to find the limit of uh, this uh, product because this is like in the form infinity times 0, which is an indeterminate form. So to evaluate uh, the limit of uh, this uh, product here, we need again to use this result. And from this result, we know that the limit of the reciprocal is also equal to 1. So if we want to use the following result, then this tells us that we need this angle theta here if this is an angle theta. So therefore, we can multiply this numerator here by 4x. We'll get 4x. So it's like in the form theta over sine theta. And again, thinking of this result here, so we want to divide this by theta, but in this case, our theta is equal to 5x. So that will be sine of 5x over 5x. But if we're going to find the product of this one, the product will have a factor that is equal to 4 over 5. But in this case, our factor is just 1. Therefore, we have to multiply this product okay, by 5 over 4 to make sure that this one here is equal to this expression. So from this, we can already evaluate the limit. But if you want to make your solution clearer, then you can do the following. So you can take the product of the limits, 
And then from here, you can make a change of variable. Also for this one, you can make a change of variable. So we can write this expression here as this expression. So here, our theta is equal to 4x and our t is equal to 5x. And keep in mind that as x approaches 0, then our theta will also approach 0. So as x approaches 0, our t will also approach 0. So applying this result here, we'll get 5 over 4 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is equal to 5 over 4. Now, let me show you another way to evaluate this limit. Another way to evaluate this limit is the following. But here, we're going to assume that we know already the following result, that the limit of theta over theta as a theta approaches 0 is equal to 1. This is not hard to show because tangent theta over theta can be written as sine theta over theta and then times 1 over cosine theta. And we know that this factor here will approach 1 and then cosine theta will also approach 1. So the limit of this product is equal to 1 times 1, which is equal to 1. So if we know this result, we can evaluate this limit in the following way. So we first write this expression as this product here. Again, why are we dividing by 5x here? Because we want to use this result. It should be in the form tangent of theta over theta. So our theta here is equal to 5x. And why do we have this 4x in the numerator of this expression? Again, because we're thinking of using this result. So when we do this manipulation here, we have to make sure that the product is equal to the original expression. So here, if we cancel this x here, we have a factor which is equal to 4 over 5. That's the reason why we are multiplying it also by 5 over 4. So from this, we can already compute the limit. And the limit is equal to 1 times 1 times 5 over 4. But if you want to make the computations clearer, then you can also do a substitution. So first, you use limit of product equal to product of limits. So we're assuming here that the limits of the factors exist. And then if we do the substitution, theta equal to 5x and t equal to 4x, then we'll be able to write this limit here as this limit, and then this limit here as this limit. And applying the results here, we'll get 5 over 4 times 1 times 1, which is equal to 5 over 4. Let's now move to our last problem. Now, let's look at this limit. So as x approaches 0, cosine of 3x will approach cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So the numerator here will approach 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. And the denominator will approach 0 plus sine of 0, which is 0. So it will approach 0 as well. So again, we have here an indeterminate form. So to evaluate this limit, we need to do some manipulation again, and we have to use known limits involving sine and cosine. So here we need to use this fact again, and because we see an expression in the form one minus cosine theta in the numerator, this tells us that we may need the result limit as a theta approaches zero of one minus cosine theta all over theta is equal to zero. So for us to use these two results here, we can write the numerator and denominator in the form 1 minus cosine theta over theta. So since we divided by 3x, we have to multiply by 3x for the numerator to be equal to the original numerator. And in the denominator, we can divide this by 7x and then also multiply it by 7x and we'll get the following expression. And we can cancel this common factor here, x and x, and also this x and x here. And therefore, we can write this limit as 3 over 7 times limit as x approaches 0 of this expression. So from here, we can already compute the limit. And the limit will be 3 over 7 times limit of the numerator is 0. And limit of the denominator is 1 over 7 plus 1. But if we want to make the computations clearer, then we can write this limit as 3 over 7 times this expression. And we can make substitutions here where we can make 3x, this angle here, to be our theta, and this angle here to be our t, which writes this expression in this form. 
And now applying these uh, two results here, we'll get 3 over 7 times 0 over 1 over 7 plus 1, which is equal to 0. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.